Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Welcome to Women's Corner. My name is Just Blossom. It's good to be here. It's the 4th of November, 2024. We just have a month plus to get to December and a whole to back from the year 2025. I hope we're all preparing. And I want you to know Women's Corner is all about women. It will try to promote women, their business, you know, share your success story. At the same time, some trending issues relating to women, children, and family. Of course, we discuss that on the program. Also, we stream live on Facebook and Twitter, Galaxy Television, on all our social media platforms. And you can download Galaxy Television app from Google Play Store or Apple Play Store and be part of our program. Today, we're sharing another life success story. And of course, we'll still be chipping in some relationship talks if time permits us. And of course, uh, we have an amazing guest that will be joining us. But before I introduce my guest or show you a clip of what she does or what she has been doing over the years, I want us to go for a short uh, life hack. All right, welcome back. Yes, you've got that life hack. There's so much more coming from where that came from, but we can't give you all today. We just have to give you like about 10. So you could just make do with that one. Okay, yes, my guest. I'll be giving my guest, bringing my guest in right now. But first, let's go see where she was doing some of the things that she loves to do. And of course, then she will share her life story with us, the success, the pain, the joy behind it. And of course, yes, we will get uh, to talk about relationships, hopefully, if we have enough time. So let's see uh, our guest uh, speaker for today, you know, doing what she loves to do most. We'll be right back. Right, welcome back. Yes, we're going to invite our guest now to join us. Her name is Eniola Adeyemi. She is a writer. She is a coach. She is a speaker. As you can see right there, what she's doing is not <laughs> it's not easy. I'm going to tell you to stand before the public, thousands of people, and you're talking, and you can carry the crowd along is a big deal. Also, she is a community health practitioner. She is the convener of Champions Women. Good morning, and your lady, Yemi. Good morning. Hi, David. I'm fine. Thank you so much for joining us. It's amazing. Despite the network struggle, but you know, we're still able to make it today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the program. Thank you. So, I just want to ask first Thank I know before we talk me. about Champions Women, what actually drove you to start being a speaker, and how was it for you having to start speaking? And I, I must say, there has to be a story because not everyone can stand before the camera, stand in front of people and just keep talking and making sense and still drive every other person to enjoy or listen to what they are saying. So please share your story. We'll love to hear. All right. Um, thank you for having me. It's such a, a privilege that I appreciate that. One of the things that I be my inspiration to speak is because 
I I realize that a lot of women are out there don't even know what to do with their life. Many are stuck because of marriage. Many are stuck because of the society propaganda. There's a lot of misconception about women. Women are not enough. We don't have brain like every other. And this is something that that bothers my heart a lot because I know that women are a blessed people. They are blessed individuals. God has blessed us so much that we can use to impact our society. And I can tell you this morning that the numbers, if the numbers of women who are not maximizing their potential are given the opportunity, the world will have done a better thing. And that is one thing that propels me, that requires me to speak. So that when our voice is heard, other women will know that they support their life than just being hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I love that. Your speaking will definitely encourage other women to speak. So that brings me to the question. Did you just start speaking? Was there no challenge? Do you have any challenge as though as, uh, you know, most of the times people, a lot of people do not believe in a woman coming out to speak, being a speaker, you know, encouraging other persons. It takes a, a whole lot to break the ice. So what was it for you? How was it? How was the struggle like for you? Yes, um, for me, I would say it was a struggle, maybe because I was a first girl, I grew up in church, we had the opportunity right from childhood, from the school teacher, in Kapuchka, and all of that. So I think that prepared me for this, because I, I don't think it was a good But I remember that um, it was my end of secondary school, I, I saw things that I'm not so comfortable with. And I think that inspires me to always want to talk about whatever that is in. Mm -hmm. The girl child. It started from then. So when you do something that is not child, I, I always want to take on it. When you say, no, this thing must not be done. And I see that as an opportunity to say, I, my voice must be, I must tell people that women should not be perceived as, as serial. Women should not be perceived as not enough. So when, you know, because of our society, a lot of things are happening and I think there should be a power that shifts to that, especially concerning women. So there should be more women who are unleashing their potential. But anyways, there's still a breaker and uh, it's so funny that um, last week, I think it was Friday, I talked about, I gave a help tips on how you can prevent the spread of flu. And funny enough, just on Sunday, I think I almost started developing one, but anyway, I don't think I do have one because you can hear from my voice, but I'm maintaining it. So. <laughs> Welcome back. This is with um, Women's Corner. Of course, we're talking about uh, Eniola Deyemi's success story. And of course, she is a writer. She's a coach. She's a speaker, a community health practitioner. She is a convener of champions for women. Eniola, can we have Eniola on the screen? Okay, while we're still talking, I want to just uh, make us note something. Of course, as the year runs out, there's this thing people call re a resolution. I think that it yes, resolution. Every year, everyone wants to have resolution. And uh, because of how much Nigerians have taken it more like even a religion to have resolution, they end up not even doing one thing on the, you know, the to-do list for the year. So I think it's better you take each day as it comes and just be a better version of yourself. Or sometimes really uh, in the month, in the month, take your time, sit down, review yourself, review the things you've done, the things you've not done, know what you need to add, know what you need to subtract, know the people you want to keep around you, know those you want to, you know, stay away from. I think it's just one thing I'm just going to keep saying. I said it last year, I'm saying it this year. Resolution is not just about that. A lot of people keep this and end up procrastinating, not being able to do anything. And we know what procrastination does. It's more like a disease that has no cure until you know you procrastinate. That's the only way you can actually cure yourself from that. Still with us. So I'm just going to uh, let her go talking because uh, we have less than 10 minutes to wrap up the program. So Anyola, you were trying to tell us uh, some of the challenges and of course the things people should expect if they have to go into public speaking or to, you know, champion a very good um, 
how do I put it, a very good group, organization, or an NGO. So please go ahead while listening to me now. So I was saying that women can be gay and they should be gay. Because we live in a, a, we live in a society where women are not considered to be gay. Yeah, they are not considered to have gay or the same energy as others. And this has created a lot of insecure or a sarcastic look or perception about women and have to come to an end. This is, this is one of the things that has inspired me. And for everyone who wants to come with in engagement or you want to speak, you will love to talk to women or to any other person. One of the things that is very, very important for you to know is that you don't need more time. You don't need less discussion. You don't need more time. You don't need to stay okay until I'm so I'm so concerned. So All you need to do is to start your discussion and stop working on the same type of sexual enough. And I want to tell younger ones that stop saying you need somebody to motivate you. We are in an era that self motivation or self control is all that is needed. You just need to motivate yourself and have self control. Put down the things you need to do and start accepting someone else. And don't get overwhelmed. Don't get into competition. Maybe you are just starting and you are already, I think, somebody more. I started 10 years ago, 5 years ago, I want to be like that person. No, you just need to take this time and take it one step at a time, improving yourself. The competition should actually be with yourself and not with another person. Compete with how you can be a better version of who you already have. All right. And another thing I would say is that you don't need, you don't need more resources. I hope people that I need this, I need that, I want to do this, I want to do that. You don't need more resources. You just need to be helpful. You resource with you by yourself. You cook yourself. Take time to sit with yourself. Ask yourself questions. Answer the question by yourself and be genuine with your answers. When you do this, opportunity will come. You know, I, I, I've heard a lot of people saying that, ah, you are lucky. No, there is no one that is lucky. You don't need luck to shine. You don't need luck to reject. All you need is preparation. When you prepare yourself, when the time comes, people will think you are lucky. No, you are not lucky. In your place of inspiration, like I want to tell people, that some people are made on in, by, their, by what they get for, how they get, not on the wind. Not that they come to the room to fight that they are made. No. They are wind started to work for them when they started to carry. So I tell young people, if you want to come to the people, they go, start preparing for me now. On the whole, stand in front of your mirror and talk to yourself. Don't just stand in front of your mirror and use your mirror for makeup. No, use your mirror as a reflection for yourself. Oh. And so this is something that has inspired. Okay, thank you very much. Mirror, use your mirror as not just uh, you know where you sit down, do your makeup, and all of that. Use your mirror as your reflection. See yourself. I remember. I didn't even know she was going to say something. Like she was going to even tell this line. I was just talking about resolution. You always have to just see a better reflection of yourself. Always think back and to make better decisions. Okay, that being said, you sharing um, the advice you want to give to people who want to be like you and expecting some of the challenges that uh, they might have to face and trying to overcome them at the same time. Now, I'm going to go over to champion women. Champions women. So what was the brain behind champions women? You know, what made you... Say, I want to go um, go into this. I want to make women champions in their own field, in whatever they do. We just want to know what the drive was and how long it took you to put all of this together for those who probably do want to champion women. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. The champion woman initiative started actually in 2020 officially. Well, it was a dream or a burden that has been lost for several years. And now, what better that? Desire is because of the things that I see around. You see, come back to the society, the world, where women are not considered to be enough. And our society has become a standard work for women. It has become a standard work for women. Women are not asked to unleash their life. When you are shy, you start complaining. Ah, who you are? Why are you doing this? You are a girl. You should take things from me. And when other, when the other gender are 
we are celebrated. And like one of the things that inspired me more is when I started hearing that when a man is doing well at a tender age, they would actually that guy and say, Oh, you can have up to that. But when a woman is also doing well at a tender age, the spirit is different. The actual age is different. Instead of women being celebrated, they are shut down. And I said, No, this has to stop. We need to build, we need to wait to follow God. And uh, one of the favorite, um, I don't know, not right now, I think the scripture that John had this day was a man of God, a spirit, that said, This is more than the word of Judah and to Jerusalem. Wait at the end of your final ground and do not go among them. So, all the environment you have as a woman, that's not productive or that's not aligned with the tribe. Do not break out of that environment. And that is what the best champion will have. The champion will be better to break the final ground that is stopping or that is not aligned with the potential to the woman to grow. Hmm. Okay. That is amazing. All right. Um, basically, you said something that actually drove me and that wants me to ask this question. And that's what you said. You saw some things that made you decide to say, no, you do not like this. You don't like the norm. You want it to be changed. You want women to be better. And that was why you decided to make sure that women are champions in their own field. So what was that major thing? I know you must have seen a whole lot of them. But what was that major thing? That one thing that made you... That made you to, that gave you this click of, okay, no. In fact, I've been seeing every other thing. I've been taking it, but you see this particular one. I must create something. I must, uh, you know, make women champion in their field. What was that thing that gave you the click? Two things, actually. The first one was a very close friend who, who was a lawyer. She's late now. Yeah, so that's good. Um, she has two ch children. They are both well. And the husband is like, you cannot work, you just have to sit and let out. I married you to give me children. And unfortunately, a lot of people give me what I want. They are there, bearing girls, child. They have no values to me. They cannot inherit my property. And my friend was worrying her. So I was like, she sees that at the end of her. And I said, no, come on. You are not committed to be a child bearing agent. You are not an agent. Of child bearing in your that is not to your life that is getting married and having children. And I realized also that around that same time, we have a lot of vibrant young women who are married, and all they want to do is to sit in their husband's house, bear children, and forget, and think that it's all about life. So the child woman was dated to inspire the mind of young women, both married and single. So know that there's more to their life than getting married and very children. Huh. You are a breeder, you are a nurturer, you are a co-creator with God. You are not just a man man's house and start bearing children and just all about your life. When there are one thousand and one things that are very good for your society. Huh. And so the inspiration as a chapter one of fun is to raise women to realize that there is much to their life. Than getting money and getting to Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I like that. She's more than just bearing children. I hope women are learning because I know it's not easy. There's one thing I know for sure if, if there's nothing, if most women, it's not like they don't know how to take care of themselves. Of course, before getting married, even they were looking pretty, they know how to take care of themselves, they know what to eat. They know where they want to go and how they want to feel. But you know, when children come in, they have their spouse, they have to put all, model all these things together and still be one. I don't know how we do it, but <laughs> I think we're wired that way. So it's an amazing one that you're trying yeah. to, um, you know, build women to be able to stand on their own, no matter the challenge they are facing. It's an amazing one. Thank you so much, Eniola, for even doing all of this for the women out there. In fact, I'm doing my own from this end. As you can see, this is Women's Corner. So yes, just keep pushing, keep doing it. And of course, the Lord is your strength. Anyways, I want to appreciate you for, uh, from all of us at Galaxy TV. I know we didn't have enough time to share your story and to ask you deep questions so you can uh, share with us and let us learn. But hopefully some other time we'll bring you up on the program. So this time around, hopefully the network will be on our side 
and we'll be able to talk more uh, facts about what you do. But until then, thank you so much from all of us at Galaxy TV. We really do appreciate you and we hope you enjoy the program. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. God bless you. And I would love to be here once again. <laughs> All right. That is it from Eniola Adeyemi. You can see why she was talking with her medical issues, but of course, she was the one who was sharing her video where she was making those statements. She made fabulous statements. And guess what? One of the things she said is the mirror is not just for your makeup or to check your features. It is to get your reflection. And your reflection is the things you have done in the past, the things you need to change. And who? you want yourself to be. On